thought it was about to just do what it did to me this one time. I'm just using my computer. Okay. What's up? Is it, does it like block your other question? Sometimes it doesn't get my <clears throat> Call out, uh, man, read. <clears throat> yeah. Hello, Christy. Nice to see you again. All right, guys, I'm going to try to round up a few people that are running late. We'll start in a few minutes, guys. All right, I guess this is it. Chad, to uh, Chad, Chid. All right, if you guys could, Brian, please put your video on. And he froze. <laughs> I know G you know how to figure out the way to make it work. All right, guys. Let's get it started. Huh? Let's get it started here. Pretty sure I said, that song says retarded, doesn't it? Retarded and high. All right, I'll put this mic on. Let's see, I don't really know where to connect these things when you don't have a caller. Oh, wait. Let's get this started. Can you guys hear me through this mic better? I don't think I can hear you guys. Oh, you guys are all muted. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I guess this thing will be right under my my neck. All right, guys. So, how are we doing today? Good. Can I get some feedback in here? You guys alive? Yeah. Oh. We can hear and yeah. see you. All right. People, how's training been so far since I last saw you? It's been going. 
You guys getting some presentations in? You guys getting some reps? Uh, yeah, yeah. We've got a, I forgot about training and they scheduled somebody for two o'clock. So I'm like, oh, oops. Uh, got to reschedule now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to get you guys out of here by two. Oh, okay. Um, so if you want to keep them on or whatever you want to do, uh, I got to sit at two o'clock as well. I think okay. it'll be really short. So I'll hop right into it, guys. Um, today we're going to go over your release call. And we're also going to go over a little bit of the training checklist, which is basically a nice checklist to make sure you guys are able to check yourself on all areas of being a well-rounded benefits representative with American Income Life. So first thing we'll do is we'll go over, um, you know, some of the release call. Obviously, you guys are about to hit your first milestone. That's what they call it. Your first milestone is getting released out of training. Your second milestone is hitting your 100 presentations over 90 days. You know, your little boot camp you guys are about to enter into when you're done. Um, it's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of ups and downs, just like any real boot camp would be. But take it very, very seriously. Also, don't take it too serious and get yourself having the whole world collapsing in your mind. You know, you're going to go through no's probably more than you go through the yeses over the next 90 days. The training will not stop. You know, when you guys are released, you're going to be still actively searching out ways to do things better, actively asking your managers how you did, recording yourself, listening to your sits, going back to your script, going back to your rebuttals, your closes. Gotta have those closes down, that's for sure. Every sit, when I was released, I was able to see the littlest things that I messed up and how if I just had that down in my next sit, I would be that much closer to those sales. I could see these sales, I could see them. They're not fake, they're not false, they're not you know, something you can't attain. Everybody you sit down with is a sale it's just up to you to make it happen. Uh, luckily, some of these are layups because we got the best leads in the, in the whole world. But sometimes you might get, you know, like I said before in the first one, you got to know your demographic. You might get someone from the country or the city or vice versa, low income, high income. You know, obviously, sometimes it ain't your fault if it's not a sale because some people just can't even afford it. You know, some people don't even think about insurance at all. Like they're just not insurance minded whatsoever. You know, you'll have that like 2% of the time, 5% of the time. Um, but the most important thing is guys over your, your next 90 days is just to make sure you guys aim for a hundred presentations, a hundred presentations over 90 days is basically just like one presentation a day. Okay. Now, obviously, Monday and Thursday are our office days. So, you know, you're, you're really shooting for in a three month period, just about, you know, 20 to 25 presentations a week. Okay. Or not a week, a month, a month, 30 presentations a month. Technically, if you guys look at it, like uh, an average, an average month in the year, since you got February and stuff, and you know, some of them are shorter. An average month is like 4.2 weeks, you know, 4.3 weeks. So, you know, if you think about it, if you need 30 presentations every month, you're just gonna shoot for a small, small goal of 10 presentations a week. That is not that hard. 10 presentations a week is easy. We're talking, you got Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. And you even got Saturday or Sunday if you're running on those. I highly suggest to book up on Sunday. That's where the magic happens. Um, but, you know, Sunday, though, get in three presentations. Friday, get in two, maybe three. Tuesday, Wednesday, two and two each. 
So there we go. Boom. We just knocked out two, two, and two, plus you know three over the weekend, four over the weekend. There's your 10 presentations a week. So that, guys, I promise you, don't overcomplicate this deal. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, this is all, every time you get a no sale, every time you, you, you know, go throughout a whole day and whether you make one sale or four sales, there was something that happened that day that got you closer to closing every single client that you see, you know, to being comfortable with your presentation where you almost know now after your first 90 days, if you do a hundred presentations, you're going to know the client's next sentence. You're going to be like, Oh man, like I've, I've done this a hundred times. Like I know where he's going with this. I know what mindset he's got. I'm going to say this, this, and this. He's a sale. I can tell. They don't got nothing. I got this. This is it. I'm good. You know, so but the more you mess around in your first 90 days, you're taking days, you're rescheduling everybody. Maybe you're, you know, letting the, letting the comfortability kind of creep in. You're taking three days off with your spouse to go on some random vacation. Like I wouldn't suggest doing anything like that in your next 90 days. Think about it this way. This first 90 days for the rest of your life, it's going to determine how the rest of your life goes, at least the rest of your career here. The more you mess around, the more you don't execute in your first 90, the harder it's going to be after. Okay. You said that uh, the recordings with the, sits are we allowed to record the sits that we have yeah i are did you guys know that this is recording right now well yeah no i meant with like yeah my, i just mean that they're putting personal information on there and everything you know so yeah. i wasn't sure if i was allowed to yeah yeah great question i i, I was just saying that like if, if you noticed it's 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 pretty um it's hard to notice the recording button in the top screen so you just have to create the Zoom meeting and you have to go to advanced options and you have to click record meetings automatically. Okay. So right when it starts, <coughs> you'll start the meeting, <coughs> excuse me, enable the waiting room. So that way you start, it's already recording. You let them in the waiting room. First things first, you're, hey, how you doing? They won't even notice. Um, if they do ask, you know, you can definitely be like, yeah, we record these for quality, quality and training purposes, just like they'll say over the phone. Okay. You know, and if they're really like, I've never had anyone be like, oh, are you recording? And I say, yeah, it's for quality. Then, oh, okay. I'll always be like, we can stop recording if you'd like to, and I'll stop it, you know, but okay. it's happened to me like once. It's happened okay. to me like once. Yeah. So, so yeah. And, 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 and honestly, you know, you can stop it at the very end if it's like going against yourself, like you, you don't feel comfortable recording their bank account and everything like that. There's okay. a stack of paper on this space heater. So I'm going to go move this real quick. <laughs> Silly gooses. Um, now, great question. I'm glad you asked. So uh, that's your 90 days. Whoever you're getting released with, we'll go over that again with you over the phone. You guys are going to all have a release call. Pretty sure you guys go to Casey and um, my guys go to geo so like you'll be meeting with one of the rgas kc geo and if you're not on josh's team you might be meeting with josh right um so these these phone calls are just meant to test that you're ready and you're like kind of you know self-sufficient enough to be out on your own and you don't need to be held for a little bit longer so what they're going to go over on these phone calls first thing is a union phone call like a mock phone call just like you guys have been doing you get, you're allowed to have your scripts out for the union phone call. You're allowed to have your rebuttal sheets out for the union phone call. What these, what these managers are going to be doing on this phone call with you, they're going to be looking for your ability to like be self-sufficient. Like you can't just be like, you know, he hits you with the rebuttal to throw you off or an objection to throw you off. And you're just like, Oh um, yeah, we, we already did mail you a letter of explanation. Uh, now it's just our job to deliver the benefits. And then you like stop, right? You don't want to just stop. Like you want to act like it's a real phone call, treat it like it's a real client. They're going to be looking for you to just continue to rebuttal and go back to the script, rebuttal and go back to the script. Just be ready for any objection they might throw at you, just like a real client and show that you're talking loud, proud, you know, 
with actual like momentum, not like this is the first time you've been on a phone call. So the union phone call number one, uh, control over Zoom is number two. We went over that in our first meeting together. If you guys don't have that recording, uh, you know, just go ahead and send me a, a text and uh, I'll get you that recording. I don't know if you guys are recording on your phones or anything like that. Um, control over Zoom and then also getting them on Zoom, right? So getting them on Zoom is obviously first. They're going to make you be like a mock, like, hey, Mary, we're ready for you. We're, we, we just finished up with our last member. We're ready when you are. Go ahead and click that link. And I'll, I'll sit here on the phone with you and make sure you're ready to go. And we'll, we'll, I'll help you out if you have any trouble. Go ahead and hop on now, right? You guys got to know the five different types of referrals. Five different types of referrals. Who who knows them in this room? You know, three of them. What are they? Um, discount card, child safe kit, and an insurance with a mutual fund. Discount card. <coughs> Excuse me. Child safe kit. Child safe kit, and then insurance referrals with the vibs. That's good. Where are we missing the other two? Oh, I know. Oh uh, well. Oh. What was that? The will? Will kit? Yeah. yeah, you could get will kit. Yeah, yeah. That's like a new one. So it's not like technically one of the, you know, like founding um, referrals, but like that's a good one. You can get will kit referrals if that's what you guys are doing over there. The last two guys are going to be contingent beneficiaries and the catch up program. Anyone heard of the catch up program by chance yet? Yes, no? No. No? Thank you for, for being my, my voice over the Zoom here. Thank you for, <laughs> for coming. Discount, child safety kit, insurance referral, contingent beneficiary, catch up referral. Catch up referral is a very, very valuable uh, type of referral. You know, before you get out of the house, you already collected all the other referrals, you already did your bibs, you're already kind of asking them how you did today. It's almost like you forgot. Hey, oh, oh, Joe, you're in the local 250, right? Oh, yeah. Now, I, I almost forgot. They, your union's been really, really honest about this. They need your help with something. See, about 90% of the people in your union, Joe, they filled out the three by five yellow card just like you did today. And they've been seeing and they, they got the benefits. They loved it, you know, just like you and the family today. But about 10% of them haven't been seen. And we don't know what's going on. I think they were saying there was something with the mailing. Uh, the ink was getting smudged. And also the pandemic's been kind of messing up the USPS. But whatever it was, we, we're not sure. But what they're having us do to fix it, you know, or who, whoever they are, we don't know. Whoever we miss, we don't know who it is. That doesn't matter, right? What does matter is what they have us doing to fix this, to combat this. And I almost forgot, but every single time we sit down with one of you local 250 members, they have us asking for your help to just give us as many names of people, you know, at least a minimum of five or 10, anyone you got that, that, that may, you know, be in your union with you who uh, we can then cross check in the system and make sure that if they were seen, we'll, we'll kind of, you know, take them out of the pile of cards. We'll kind of unprioritize them. If they haven't been seen, we'll actually do the opposite. We'll take them to the top of the stack and we'll make sure that we prioritize them and, and see them right away. Uh, Cause it can take us years and years to get here. I know you said it was a couple of years since you put out the card, right, Eric? Yep. Yeah. So we don't want that happening. They need your help. Easiest way to do this is just like we did with the child safety kits with the police union is grab your phone guys. Uh, I know you, you have some numbers in there from your buddies at work. And, and let's just take them down so we can cross check them. Who, who do you want to start with? Biggest thing there is just making it sound very, very, and this is, this is consistent with every type of referral. Like if I told you that and you never met me before, would you think I was lying? And I don't think I would. I'd, I'd be like, oh shit. Well, yeah, you just gave me all these great, like, yeah, why wouldn't I want my buddies to have this? Well, if you're going about this entire sit kind of, 
lethargic and slow and you don't even give a damn about the benefits you're just going through the motions then they're going to be like well no i don't really want to put any of my friends through what you just did to me there so that goes back to our first workshop together guys i hope we're doing good on that what's up um, yes sir are the catch-up program thing only for uni then uh-huh okay Yes, sir. I can get a whole 10 out of there. Now you got this big list of referrals and you're like, hey, you know, you already did VIBS. You already did the VIBS and you already said, hey, who do you think can benefit from this program? And same way you did today. And, you know, of course, we'll we'll go ahead and when we sit down with your child safety kit sponsors and your discount cards, your mom and your dad, we'll make sure that they don't need anything on this end. But other than that, who else do you think can benefit from the program, right? And you already told him the same thing with the contingent bennies. Of course, when we sit down with these people, we'll make sure that they don't need anything. We'll, we'll go over the program with them too while we're out there um, for the kits and the beneficiary paperwork. But other than that, who else do you know? And then, then you just pretty much turned all these into insurance referrals without even lifting it like a finger. Like you just pretty much slid it right in there. Other than your child safety kit sponsors and discount card and the, the beneficiaries, you know, we, we're, we're going to do our best to see them. So we'll go over the program with them while we're out there. But other than that, who else do you know, Joe, that can benefit from this program the same way you did today? Right. That's if you guys don't know, that's the VIBS. That's in your script. VIBS, the art of, you know, collecting how you did and filling out an officer report form if it's a union member and then reselling them on everything and then telling them, who do you know? After you get that list down, boom, you got like seven insurance referrals. Then you throw in this ketchup last minute. Huh. Huh. Okay. Talk about a way to get a layup. I mean, when I was brand new, I would just find so many layups. It's just all about the way they perceive you. You can't have any doubt in your mind. You just got to like full passion, full conviction. Like we, we <laughs> greatest discount card on planet earth. I'm the discount card superhero. Greatest child said the these children are dying left and right. We got to make sure we get the, like, I'm the police. I am the police initiative guy. I mean, they got me, you know, we're saving lives out here. And we are, we are guys. I mean, if I had a no cost um, workshop with you guys, like I do with my team, I mean, I'm like, I'm like a Nazi about it, you know, not to include a bad part of history in my sentence there, but like, you know, I don't want to offend anybody or anything these days, but you know, I'm, I'm really on them about this, you know, like you got to go through this, like it's the best thing since sliced bread, which I, I do wholeheartedly believe it is. And same with that, that child safety kit. When you guys have kids someday, you'll understand. It's a way to get 31. A way to get 31 referrals? Do what I just said. Five, they're asking us to sponsor five family members into the discount card program. Police needs you to do at least 10. Two contingent bennies. We're at 17 now. Couple insurance referrals, 10 catch ups. Boom, you're at 30 referrals. You guys understand that it's going to take you so long to book a real appointment and actually get down to the sale. Like, if you guys know your averages, this is a numbers game. This is your business. You want to put the pressure on the numbers, not your performance every day, not your emotions. Like, you got to take your emotions out of it, put the pressure on the numbers to guarantee results as if it was a salary paying job. That's what you got to do. And that's all I kept telling myself. If I just put the pressure on these numbers, there's no effing way that I'm not going to be able to get the results because numbers don't lie. I'm closer and closer and closer every time. These insurance referrals, they may go and they may, they, you may bomb the first, fucking, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't swear. You may bomb the first five, but after those five, that sixth one, you're going to bring the heat. You're going to be like, all right, man, I talked to Drew already. I ain't messing this while we're there up for this referral. You're getting this stuff today. Like, you build this great intro, build this great exclusivity. Your brother did it. Your brother wanted me to get you into it. I don't even know if you can qualify. You negotiated rates, no cost benefits. Any questions, Joe? Great. We're never here. We're never going to see you again. Why would we come see you again? If it makes sense, we're going to do it today. Awesome. Union members get the best benefits. You're not in the union. Let's get it, right? So these guys are layups, layups. You guys know how many calls it takes to book an appointment on average? I'm not even going to waste time. It's about 15 to 20 calls for one appointment. 
guys want to write this down. 15 to 20 calls for one appointment. Maybe, maybe these days it might be a little bit more like 25, you know, because like we're in a virtual world where everyone's getting called and like, it's, it's kind of, I don't know. I, I, I shouldn't even say that. Like faith, sometimes faith calls the same leads that I have and the same leads that everybody has. And she'll call like, what were her numbers the other day? She called like 20 people and like got a hold of like 16. I was like, what in the, you know, so like, here's the average of 15 to 20 calls, one appointment. Now, how long does it take you to make 15 to 20 calls? Well, if the phone rings for a minute, that's how long it usually rings. There's a 30 seconds. You call them twice, right? Yeah, you, you call them twice, you double tap. So there's a minute burned right there. If, if someone doesn't answer, if they do answer, we're talking maybe five to 10, yeah. right? So 15 to 20 calls. I mean, guys, that's going to be taking you uh, almost like 45 minutes. Right, maybe maybe even an hour. Yeah. Right. So let's let's even like let's just increase these and say let's let's give ourselves some grace here. When I'm using numbers, I always over I always uh, under promise and over deliver. Let's say we do 25 to 30 for one appointment. That definitely will take you an hour, especially if somebody answers. If nobody answers, maybe you can get 40 in an hour. Right. But someone's got an answer. So 25 to 30 calls for one appointment, that took you one hour. How many appointments do we need to get a sale? Three, no, four. Three no. Hours, one no. That's, that's presentations there. Oh. How many appointments do we need to get a presentation? Three, right? Yeah. You need three appointments for one presentation. Or, um, I'm sorry, it's 50% show ratio, right? Maybe a little bit lower nowadays with the virtual, maybe a little bit lower, but let's, like I said, let's just under, right? So if it takes you guys, you know, three appointments, two appointments to see one person and you need to see three, that means you need to collect six appointments, right? Six to eight appointments, 50% show ratio, on those appointments, you're going to be able to see three to four presentations. That's how many presentations. It's a one out of three closing ratio, right? Again, you might see more. This is just the average. But I'm saying like you might see more than one sale out of three presentations. That's usually how it goes when you start getting better after your 90 days got this thing down like the back of your hand so three to four presentations get you one sale guys so if we need to book six to eight of these and and booking one just took us an hour that's 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 eight hours that's like six to eight hours of calling for a couple like for one to two sales i mean but when you look at what you can get off those sales that ain't a bad day right but, you know, what, what I'm getting at is, guys, if it takes us several hours to get a few sales and I can hang around for an extra 30 minutes and get 30 referrals, I'm definitely going to be rolling like three to four of those before I let this dude out of the appointment. Hey, real quick, out of this whole list, who do you want to guarantee that we see? Because I'm not going to get to them all, Joe. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not going to, union members are my, my main priority. So who do you want to guarantee out of this, this list of people? Of course, we've got to see your contingent beneficiaries no matter what. But, but besides them, who do you want to guarantee I get these out to? Oh, my buddy Joe and the Carpenters, he, he just had a kid. He needs it. All right, great. So your buddy Joe, who else? Your mom? All right. Can I ask you for one more favor? 90% of my job, I love Tasha is when I call these people and, 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 you know, they, you know, 90% of my job I love is when I get these benefits out to everybody and I help all the working families like you and me and, 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 and we, 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 you know, get you guys protected. We, you know, add all the value we can to you guys. I love it. I love my job. I love it. 90% of my job I love is helping families. 10% of the job I hate is when I try to do this for people who normally wouldn't have access to this. I try to get these benefits out to them. And they hang up on me like I'm some sort of crazy telemarketer. 
And everyone that you're talking to has hung up on someone like a telemarketer before. So they're going to laugh. They're going to be like, wow, your job sucks, right? But hey, that's just the game, baby. That's just sales. I mean, I don't know what to tell hey, you guys should all be past that notion by now. But um, so you tell them 10% of your job, your hate is going to hang up on you. So, so here's the thing, Joe, can I ask you for one more favor? Can you call your contingent beneficiaries and, and your brother and your mom while I'm here with you from your phone? That way I can guarantee I get them on my schedule now and I can actually guarantee I see them. Because I'll tell you one thing, Joe, the more I don't do this in my appointments, the more I try to reach out to these people on my own for my phone number, the more I'm realizing I only see probably one out of these 30 people. It's like slim to none, Joe. So can you do me one more favor? Can you call your, your at least, let's at least start with your beneficiaries, call them up. And then you gotta know your contingent beneficiary script. And it's game over, it's so easy. Like no one can, especially like catch-ups, insurance, child say, I can see them denying it over the phone because you're not sharp yet. You're not like a professional, like you're not like, you know, 100 presentations in yet. But these contingents, they have nothing to say. They have no reason to deny you. Due to the $1.7 billion worth of life insurance went unclaimed, got a call, blah, blah, blah. You guys should have a contingent beneficiary script for collecting them and for calling them. If you don't, I don't even believe that you don't because I see them all over your guys' team. I hope you have somebody now. If you don't, let me know. I put my number in the chat last time. I'll put it in here again. Um, I'll send that stuff to you if I have to, just in case. But this is how you can guarantee results while you're still learning what's not guaranteed, which is your presentation and your skill set. Make sense? Yeah, I mean, I was just going to, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So with, with that being said, Eric brought up a good point. You took an extra 30 minutes to call two of these people, or maybe you took an extra, I don't even care if you got to take an hour yeah. to call 10. Like if you sit down and, and you like get three of these people on the schedule, three referrals, the show ratio and the sale closing ratio is so much higher. It's between 66 to 75% on an international company average. So let's say I got four, that means I'm seeing three, three presentations. We need some Velcro tape for this board. Three presentations and it's a 67 to 75%, 66 to 75% closing ratio. So what's 66% out of three? It's like two, two sales. You guys see Ryan Wilson popping off. He just got released out of training. Why do you think he's popping off? He took this and implemented it immediately. Austin's the best at this. She will hunt you down and then smile at you. And then you can't even get mad at her. You're like, wow, this girl's got the, this woman's got the juice. Yeah, sell me, please. You're right. I got nothing. Union rates, great, awesome. So we just took 30 minutes to an hour to set four referrals and get three presentations and two sales? Or do you want to call for six to eight hours for one? It's up to you guys. You can choose to have some, 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 some sense, some common sense, and, and you can choose to implement this, or you can choose to be naive and some other words that I want to use and, 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 and just completely disregard this. Now, does anyone need any of those ratios or percentages reset? Because I know I just drew in a lot of different places. Write this down. Is that your, is that your notebook? You took a picture. You, you, you better be writing this down. I'm harder on my trainee, guys. Sorry. Don't think I'm like this to everybody. Mr. Eric Barrios. I'm like that guy in boot camp and full metal jacket to Eric. No, not really. I, I used to be like that. 
but he can take it. He can handle it. He wants it. He wants that kind of because because he knows if he don't get that, he ain't gonna he ain't gonna do the best he can. <clears throat> Harder you guys sweat in this training and in these first ninety days, the less you're gonna bleed in the game in your career. When I say bleed, I mean the less the less beat up you're gonna be by Joe and Mary every day. And your spouse is yelling at you. How'd it go? Did you make a sale? No. Are you sure that career is for you? Oh, oh maybe it's not. I didn't make any sales the past few days. All right? Don't think like that. Compare yourself to other business owners. Like I said, when I first came with you guys, I believe I talked about that. Other business owners with this much scalability and this much room for income and growth you only get that if you're a business owner. We're talking restaurants, construction companies. We're talking not CEOs, right? Not, not, a, not a handed CEO position that you had to work 20, 30 years for. Someone had to die for you to step in. You had to know Jimmy's uncle. Not CEOs. I'm talking you start your business. You're 100% commission. You would have to pay for the leads. You'd have to pay for the furniture. You'd have to pay for the marketing. You'd have to pay for the training. Train them yourself. This building and these leads cost Mr. Vina thousands, thousands, tens of thousands. This internet just put us in a bigger thousand category as well. I didn't even know if you could have, you could pay that much for internet. We got a brand new high speed router in every corner of the room. I don't even know how we got disconnected five seconds ago. It's been great. We were loaded up 30 people in here yesterday. Not a, not a single hiccup. So got cubicles out in the hallway. Union carpenter Joe came in and put him in. That wasn't cheap. That wasn't cheap. Union carpenter Joe's stuck. He's got a wife, kids, 40 an hour. He can't afford to go start a business or take a jump like this. His life is set in stone. His name has a salary on it. And it ain't ever going to change unless he starts flipping homes or doing his own construction company on the side. And if you guys go and look into the number of, of failed construction company starts, it's the highest failed uh, company start in the U.S. And you lost half your money doing it, if not all of it. And guess where the dude that owns Joe Schmo's Bakery down, downtown, guess where he is? Monday through Friday from nine to nine. He's in his freaking bakery, opening, preparing, prepping the food, prepping the dough, grinding all day, yelling at teenage kids that don't know how to do the job he's trying to make them to do. Kids are at home screaming, crying. They want dad to come back. Barely making the rent because he put a quarter mil into this donut factory, bakery if not more in this crazy state where we live in. And ain't even making a dime for the first couple of years. Most companies don't make a dime for the first couple of years. No profit, they break even. You guys have everything, the full support of an international company, all expense paid. All you gotta do is put in this work. All you got to do is just implement what you did wrong in the last sit. And if you were on the agency meeting, continue to give the next shot, everything you got, the next presentation, like as if it was your last. And I really can wholeheartedly guarantee your success here. And if you don't believe me, look at anybody that's on my team or that's on Josh's team who's been here for longer than three months. They're all able to pop deals. They're all able to do good. teaching you something you'll have in your, in your toolbox for the rest of your life, even if you're not in this career. Sales is everywhere. You can take what you learned here. You can do so many different things with it. Oh, why did I just erase that? Oh, my goodness. Eric, why didn't you stop me from doing that? Wait, I, didn't, I didn't want to mess with the box. Oh. <laughs> All, All right. right. Good thing I wrote it down. Yeah. <laughs> Just messing with you guys. All right. Five different types of referrals. 
All right, most important part of the close. Oh, that's enough. Most important part of the close is what's going to be asked. What's the most important part of the close? Oh. Anyone know? Assuming the cell. Assuming the cell. If you get with Geo, he might ask you what the art of the close is. What's the art of the clothes? What's the sauce in the clothes? What's the, what's the juice? That's called the takeaway. The takeaway. Eric, how do we take away the, the sale from them? How do we take away, what, what's the takeaway? As much as you need this, as much as your family needs this, as much as I want to get you caught up with all the other members during your enrollment period, I would just have to see if you can even qualify, Eric. You guys got the same thing on your script. It's just worded. I think you guys like qualify people first and then you show options. Or no, you guys show options first. They pick one. Then you tell them, hey, as much as I want to get you your option, I got to see if you can qualify. That's called the takeaway. This is huge. This is huge. Solidification. Rated risk. And then you should at least have the closes down. I want to think about it. And guess what? I can't afford it. Which most of the time is complete BS. Grant Cardone says it's never about money. It's almost always about the salesman. When people want something bad enough, when they see a need for something for their number one thing in their life, which is family, paying a dollar a day is not going to stop them. Sacrificing a Mountain Dew a day is not going to stop them. Everyone can afford $30 a month. Everyone can afford $15 a month. Yeah, I just can't afford it. You're a great guy. You're pretty much what they're saying is like, I have no, I see no reason why I should put $10 a month towards this product. That's what they're really saying to you. So you battle with an I can't afford it close. Then they have no, no, no real reason. So then they go to the real reason. Then, then the real stuff comes out. When you hit them with the I can't afford it. Well, we, we, we could just call you back, right? Like we can just do this next time, right? I mean, we just wanted to think about it and just make sure we're making the right decision. And I want to kind of look around, shop around, blah, 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 blah. All stuff that you didn't do in the presentation. Ratings, union negotiated rates, who we are should amaze them. Why would you shop around when I just told you and you trust me because of rapport and you trust me because of control and I'm from your freaking union. Why would you think there's a better rate out there? You either didn't hear what I said because I wasn't presenting like I taught you guys on Wednesday. Talking, I should say. Or they just straight up don't trust you. Something wrong you did. They don't think this is the company. Like they don't trust you or the company. One of those two. They didn't hear you or they don't trust you or the company. So you get these two down and even get some backups down. Again, should definitely be on your script. You write this down? Yeah. Okay. Guys can I erase this? I 
Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. One sec, guys. This thing just closed down. I had it up for you guys. Always does this to me. There it is, training checklist. Guys, how do you guys know uh, how to handle an uninsurable client? Trial, it's one answer. Double up on the healthy spouse. Mary or Joe, if they're under age 40 and you get them a $100,000 policy for 130, 120, Mary pays 60, Joe pays 60, they get a $100,000 policy on the healthy spouse. There's guaranteed 30 grand inside of that policy by the time you're 65. Even more by the time someone actually dies at 80. What do you think we're gonna do now? Well, I got 40 G's in my cash value because we doubled up in the healthy spouse. You're going to pull that out, Joe, and you're going to pay for Mary's funeral because she can't get no life insurance today because she has cirrhosis or whatever. And then, yeah, of course, if you can't have a double up, if it's just some single guy or girl, I just try it. Sometimes it may not be something that they're going to be declined for for life. Maybe like the trial is just, you know, uninsurable today, but maybe the underwriting field manual says must wait five years before consider. I'll just let him think we're going to be able to consider coverage. I'll trial him. I won't shoot him down and tell him you're, you're screwed because that's going to turn the other spouse off. I'll say, all right, you guys chose option B. Great. Let's get you squared away. And I'll do the entire application the same way I would have. And I'll be like, Joe, they're going to trial you though. What that means, it's no big deal. It just means they're actually just gonna, they're gonna not take any money out of the account just yet. They're gonna underwrite you and approve you first before they start taking money out. So just about a six to eight week process. But Mary, uh, you, you'll, be, you'll be ready to go right away. Um, you'll be good to go. Uh, you'll be approved standard here. As long as everything you answered was okay. Joe, they just trialed you though for the, for the diabetes. It's no big deal. We're talking like uninsurable, not like trial because, you know, it says to like sometimes you have to trial somebody if it's over a thousand milligrams of medication of any medication, you're supposed to trial them. If you don't, Jackie will. That's a case where you're like, bro, you're fine. We just have to trial this. You're going to get approved in six weeks. We just agency company rules. We have to trial. Them. But so that's your two routes to trial one. So the other one doesn't get turned off take care of the healthy one, or you could just straight up, if it's like an obvious, the dude's got liver failure, he, he knows he ain't getting insured, he's been denied by several companies already, he really ain't gonna have, that's not gonna be new news to him. What will be new news to him is doubling up on the healthy spouse and showing him that cash value out of your rate book. Make sure you guys have rate books, you have documentation like a professional would. Again, text me if you don't have a rate book. How to establish control and why it's important. Shouldn't have to go over that. Went over that on Wednesday. Singles and seniors. Singles and seniors. Singles, you want to sell for one thing. Not sell, but you want to focus on one selling point for singles. And that's going to be more or less cash value. Seniors, you want to focus on a selling point of the freedom of choice certificate, guaranteeing no matter what, no matter how, their funeral is taken care of. That's what seniors are looking for. That's why they buy everything they see on TV that says, Guaranteed, guaranteed. Shark Mop is guaranteed to clean your mess forever. Never have to work again, Mary. Colonial Life, guaranteed. Your premiums will never go up and your funeral will always be covered. But if you read the fine print, we don't pay out unless you have this for more than two years. 
No, no, we're talking a straight guarantee, seeing your whole life, free and choice certificate, no matter when, no matter how. Referrals, assuming, collecting, calling, and selling. Rolling referrals, homework assignment, must have 50 referrals collected on the laptop. Woo, those were some strict rules back in the day. Guys should though, really, it's five sits. Uh, assuming, collecting, calling, selling, that's a, that is not my workshop today. You guys gotta get that down. Uh, how to, we'll be here till three. How to fill out an application. How many times have they taken a nap in the home? How many times have they touched an application? Do they have the first four questions on the app memorized? Should, because when you're skipping those videos, you're buying time. Trying to get to the super combo, you're like not really knowing what to say. You don't want to have any dead space after that. I got to see if you can qualify. You don't want to have any dead space from there to the options. All that dead space is going to give them thoughts and they're going to look at each other and they're going to start thinking weird things. They're going to start talking weird. You might lose a sale because you just let them sit in silence for five minutes because you didn't memorize the first five medical questions. Eric. No. If you haven't filled out an application before, please download eApp from AI Life. Your manager can give you his login. You can click the button right there on the website. It says download eApp. And it will literally just have you. There's a training button where you can just start punching in random families, playing with it all day. Hit and validate, learning how to get through it. If you guys don't have eApp downloaded, please, please text me as well. Because I'm going to start kind of just getting on people's asses about this. You guys should have this stuff down. Uh, have this uh, stuff downloaded, I mean, you know, at, yeah. But, you know, our managers are busier than ever. This is a crazy month. It's a crazy year. So don't, don't, you know, don't uh, hold, hold them. Don't, don't uh, be screaming at them or anything like that. Just remind them, hey, can I get the app downloaded? Difference between a union, an association, a credit union, and a child safe. A union is obviously a labor union. You guys know about the history of those. Associations are AM vets, VFW, Post Local 5. Uh, the Nurses Association of Illinois, I saw that in one of our lead packs the other day. Firefighters Association of Illinois. Credit union is obviously the same thing as a union, just with a bank. Collective bargaining agreement between a bunch of members that are make up this credit union and your $20,000 savings account is Joe Schmo's mortgage. They all share the same pot of money. And the idea is to get you cheap rates on insurance, cheap rates on any other bank benefits and loans, cheap interest rates, and they even throw in some no cost stuff sometimes too. Why do you think we work with their CEO? What do we do? The same exact thing. That's why they see value in our company when they work with us from a credit union. It's the same exact bond, same exact uh, motivation, uh, motivational uh, factors when they, you know, that they had when they opened up the credit union. B union, buy union, negotiated rates, no cost benefits. And obviously the main thing is we're protecting their assets with life insurance. How happy do you think a bank's gonna be if you just died and now the whole $100,000 mortgage is taken care of? How to handle objections at the door, don't worry about that. Know the agent playbook. Hugh Bell, five things for enthusiasm. Taught you guys that on Wednesday. Power phrases, power phrases are like, uh, you know, like um, if you guys ever learned like the one hour power, like if I told you that if you had to work one hour less uh, a week and you took home 39 hours instead of 40, would that take food off the table? Probably not, right? If you worked one hour over, would, would, you, would, you, would you be going to Vegas buying a Lamborghini? No, probably not. Either way, the union saw that whether we lost an hour or gained an hour, it didn't affect our family. But if I told you that same hour of pay a week can take care of everything on this needs analysis for the rest of your life, would you say that that's worth it? That's an example of a power phrase. Definitely just find these things in the agent playbook. Three times people think about it. That's a, that's a, I want to think about it close. There's only three times people think about it. One, 
when someone close to them dies and they see that financial burden for themselves. Two, when their health changes and now they can't get it. Or three, when you got this knucklehead out here at your table trying to get you taken care of. Manager my witness, witness training 100% on at least two sales. Guys got to have two sales 100% on your own to be released. If you don't have that yet, you won't be released one day. It's no big deal. How to handle a POS. I mean, it is a big deal. You want to get rocking and rolling. How to handle a POS. How to code leads. Certification, rated risk, field underwriting manual. Importance of number eight on scheduling tips in the agent playbook. Number eight for scheduling tips is always book on the first phone call. Always book on the first phone call. Odds of you getting them on again and getting them booked are, whew, they are, trust me, not high. Do whatever it takes to get them booked that first time. How to set with the wife. How to maintain control over the phone. Things we talked about when we were in, on Wednesday. How to set with the wife. You set with the wife the same way you set with the husband. I can just verify this all with you, Mary, and I'll get you off the phone here. Now, did you make it or did your husband read that letter of explanation that came with the card? When Did you fill it out, Mary? Oh, I filled it out. Yeah, that was me. Okay, did you read the letter of explanation that came with that card? Basically, it's for no cost benefits, one of which is that insurance policy. Just my job to deliver, explain, answer any questions. What time do you and Joe get home together? Great. Oh, you don't know what time Joe gets home? You want to talk to him first? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, as busy as you are, as busy as we are, if we caught you on the phone, we got to make sure we get you down on the schedule because we're coming up in our last few days in the area. So I'm going to give you a homework assignment. Christy, when's the last time you got one of those? Ha, 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 ha. Long time ago, right? Yeah. The homework assignment's going to be to go ahead and just when Joe gets home tonight, let him know that we booked that appointment for tomorrow between three and five. And then if that doesn't work, give me a call back. If I don't answer, leave me a voicemail. That just means I'm with another member. If it does work and I don't hear from you, I'll see you tomorrow between four and five. I'll send this recording to you guys. Drop your emails in this chat for me before we head out. I'm going to send this recording to you because I know I'm talking a bit fast. All right, last couple of things. Very, very important. Underwriting field manual is on EAP. It's right there at the top of EAP. It says, it says help underwriting field manual. That's how you determine whether things are trials. You know, you guys are considered field underwriters, you know, so you got to be able to do a little bit of it before you sign somebody up. So you're not just kind of working for nothing, sending off people that are like half dead and not even realizing they're going to get declined. It's pretty hard to get declined though. Solidification rated risk, that is so important. You have to have your solidification down. You have to have your rated risk down. Three things can happen during underwriting. You can get rated, you can get approved, you can get declined. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. I'll send this training checklist to you guys as well. How to handle someone that's been seen within the past six months. Okay, great. Who, who was that? Okay, how long ago was that? Yeah. Okay. Did they get you out? Did they actually mail you out the benefits folder after the Zoom call? No? Oh, that's exactly why I'm calling. My job is to make sure you get out the Zoom folder. And, and did they go over the discount card, the health services discount card last time? Most of them say no as well, because that thing just came out. Okay, no, not the old discount card, the new one. How about the free living and final will kit? No, 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 not the little last will and testament, not the fig, the full living and final will. Did they go over that last time? No, okay, tell you what, it's exactly why I'm calling. It's just my job to get you out the updated, no cost benefits. I'm actually part of uh, the, the, the uh, quality control team. And it's just my job to get you out these benefits again. All right, get you out these no cost benefits, make sure everything's in a good spot. Is that always going to work? No. Is it going to work if you're really convicted and you have no doubt in your mind that you're going to bring a different presentation than the last guy? And if you believe that these clients will not even notice the difference, I promise you they won't even notice the difference. Like they're not going to be like, well, you heard this last time. They, they don't even, most of these people don't even remember what they ate for breakfast. I don't even remember what I ate for breakfast. I ate Chick-fil-A. Now I remember 
Chicky chicky. Filet. Mignon. Chick fil A. All right, so, you know, and plus, let's say you do get in there and they're all giving you all kind of crap. Like, all right, Joe, like, I'm, I'll give you a free living and final will that is supposed to be for our will kit people. That's a thousand dollar value right there. I got this brand new discount card. You said that they didn't go over. I mean, what am I? I'm not like ashamed to like come and do this again. That's why I say, who was it? If it was Casey, I'm going to make sure I don't present the same way Casey does. If it was Josh, I already know I don't present the same way Josh does. If it was one of us, you guys don't present the same way we do. So we're all good. They ain't going to remember. Trust me. And then they're going to see a different need because you're a different person. You have a better personality. You have a better passion for it. You have a better building uh, of needs. And, and uh, they might, I can't tell you how many times I've sold someone that's been seeing in the past six months. Have an ID badge and a lanyard. Your union OPEIU level 277 cards should be coming in the mail within the next couple of weeks. Should be just a few weeks after you did your agent onboarding paperwork. Put that in the lanyard, put that on your chest or you're gonna lose sales. Show it to him. Hi, I'm Vince and Sarah. Uh, who are you? Grab that quality control number. Okay, great. All right, great. Just me, I'm Vince. Here's my badge. We're on the union too. Local two seven. Can you see that okay? Let it, let it clear up real quick. Yep, yep. All right, great. Yep, we're all in the office professionals. Yep, nice to see you. And they go like this too. They're like, because they would love to see that. They're, they're wondering who you are. Discuss public relations. Yeah, please don't do no call, no shows. That's the last thing you should do in this business. You get no call, no shows going, especially with union members, you will lose your union leads uh, pretty quick. Three strike rule. Do not piss off the union members. They're your boss because without them, you ain't making nothing. Treat them with respect. If they're not treating you with respect, treat them with respect anyway to make them feel like an idiot and then kindly escort yourself out of the sit. Let them know you have bigger and better things to move on to. Don't let anyone make you think that you're, you're, you know, you're, that, they're, that their crap don't stink. Like I said in Wednesday's meeting, be prideful of what this is. Don't let anyone, there's going to be people that tell you all kind of wild stuff. This is just a sales call. This is ridiculous. Rah, 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 rah. All right, Joe. Boot camp, boot camp, boot camp, boot camp. Importance of 15 presentations per week. Mental toughness. This business is a numbers game. Take emotions out of the deal. I think I already went over that. Last thing I'm gonna go over and then we're hopping off here in two minutes. You guys, for your first 12 months, retention is the most important thing in this deal. I swear to God, retention is the most important thing in this deal. Your first 12 months, you're not gonna be on retention. You're gonna be on net to gross. Net to gross, net to gross, net to gross, net to gross, net to gross. Net to gross means what you grossed, what you submitted, what you sent off compared to what's still on, what went through. So if I sent off $75,000 worth of ALP in a single year, but only 50% 50 or 50,000 ALP is still on, who can calculate the percentage that my net to gross is going to be at while I grab this paperwork? Someone have an answer when I come back. Anyone 
we get the percentage? What is it? 66.6. Ooh, yikes. In your first four months, when they look at your net to gross, you could have the worst net to gross in history and they won't even touch your bonus or your advance. I'm not saying that that is something you want to even get into because when five to six hits, they're going to be looking at it. Your fifth to sixth month, if you're beneath 84% net to gross, they are going to take your advance or at least start to reduce, or I'm sorry, not your advance, your bonus. They're going to start to take your bonus and they're going to reduce your bonus. Seven to 12, they get a little bit more lenient on you. You can have 80% and still get a bonus. Twelve months plus, you're on retention now. Retention, you got to have a 73% retention at all times. You fall beneath 73, they're gonna they're gonna lower your bonus. You fall beneath like um, like 69 and like 65 percent, they're gonna start lowering your advance because the company is advancing you and they're bonusing you all kind of money that you clearly have not been able to get them yet at all. So why would they keep doing that? It's a privilege. You guys shouldn't have to worry. I didn't even never even I never even knew these numbers. I never had a single problem. I just did the right things for the right people at the right place at the right time, and it was all good in the hood. Retention's a little bit different though, guys. Retention doesn't look at your total on and total off in the past 12 months or anything like that. Retention. Retention looks at your sixth to twelfth month and what's on and what's off. So pretty much your sixth to twelfth month net to gross. So um, let's say you start in January, right? Next January, boom, you're out of net to gross, you're on retention. Your retention rate for that January in your 13th month is going to be what your net to gross is for what was six to 12 months earlier. What was that? That's June to January. So they're gonna look at June to January when you're in your 13th month and they're gonna see what you have on and what you, what you grossed and what you netted. And if that number is beneath 73, you gotta try to get some of that old business back on, fix it up a little bit, lower them down, whatever you gotta do. Never just never write a deal you're not sure about. Never. It's not worth it. And then of course, now you're in your 14th month, you know, it's February. You're you're two months into being on retention. And now it's not gonna look at June to, to January anymore. Now it's gonna look at July to February. Now you're in your third month of being a year plus. You're in March now, you're on retention. It's not gonna look at July to February now for your retention number. What's it gonna look at? No? It's looking at my sixth to 12th month prior and it's March. What are they gonna look at? What's six months before March? What month is that? Use your fingers. February, January, December, November, October. Five, close enough. <laughs> so they'll look at September to March. So every single month that you're on retention, they're going to look at your sixth to twelfth prior months and they're going to see what your net to gross is and if it's beneath 73 hit the panic button but in a, in a calm way and, and go find what deals you can get back on and get it taken care of 
Call me being in the hospital. Oh man. Oh man. Yes, sir. Uh, no, I did not. Ooh, I did not know that. Thank you. I'm... Okay. Oh, man. That's... All right, I'm writing that down now. I'm in the training class here. I gotta get a, I don't, I don't think I, damn man, I think I gotta do like a, I gotta go get a passport today or something, like immediately. Um, no, and then when we were supposed to go last year, I was scattering to do it and uh, everywhere was not accepting any because of COVID. It was like in the middle of the lockdown, there was no like, meetings that you could do, um, or not meetings, but like UPS, you know, USPS, they usually let you come in and do one, but I can get it done. I can, you think there's like an extension on like, you know, uh, like the deadline or something I can ask for today or something like that? Cause I can just go, I can just go run out and do it now, register for one. I think if it's like a, I think when I was reading it last March, there was like guidelines about getting an immediate one. Like if you have like an emergency, like if you're like going somewhere to see, I don't know. Is that the, uh, I thought there was another step. step. All right, sounds good. I'm gonna end this. I was just about to wrap this up. We got to sit at two. I can just let Eric take care of while I take notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just wrapping this up here. Eric stepped out and gave him a call. All right, I'll let him know. I'm sure he's got a passport. Sounds good, man. Thank you so much. All right. Oh, I need a passport, guys. All right. That's it. That's all I got for you guys. Remember Group C, Eric. Group C for convention. Just remember that. Group C. Group C. All right, guys. If you need me, text me. I'm going to take a picture of your emails. If you don't get an email from me within the next 24 hours, shoot me a text and remind me. Take care, quiet guys.